India's geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle, GSLV F08, is now standing tall majestically on the second launch pad at ISRO's Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota, with its passenger satellite safely ensconced in its payload fairing. Geosynchronous launch vehicle of ISRO, a three-stage launch vehicle system, is designed to launch two-ton class satellites into geosynchronous transfer orbit. The first stage of the launch vehicle consists of a solid core with four liquid strap-on motors. The second stage is a liquid stage and the upper stage uses cryogenic propulsion. The cryogenic upper stage of GSLV carries cryogenic propellants, namely liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen in two separate tanks. The liquid oxygen, LOX in short, is the oxidizer and is stored at minus 183 degrees Celsius, while liquid hydrogen, LH2 in short, is stored at minus 253 degrees Celsius. GSLV F08 is the 12th flight of GSLV and its 6th flight with indigenous cryogenic upper stage. With respect to its 3.4 meter diameter metallic payload fairing, GSLV F08 is similar to the previous GSLV flights. However, this flight incorporates some major improvements. The induction of high thrust Vikas engine HTVE in the second stage will enhance its performance. Induction of electromechanical actuation system in place of electrohydraulic actuation system shall also lead to improved reliability. Vikram Sarabhai Space Center at Thiruvananthapuram and the Liquid Propulsion Center at Balyamala and Bengaluru are the main contributors for the launch vehicle development. The ISRO Propulsion Complex IPRC at Mahindragiri has tested, assembled and integrated propulsion systems and stages of GSLV F08. All stage and engine related tests of ISRO's launch vehicles are carried out here. The ISRO Inertial Systems Unit IISU at Thiruvananthapuram has designed, developed and qualified the inertial sensors and systems for the launch vehicles. All solid motors are realized in SDSC Shah. Let us now take you through a series of events in a typical launch. In this mission, the GSLV will be launched from the second launch pad, which was developed to accommodate PSLVs, GSLV Mark II and Mark III. In this, the vehicle is assembled and checked on a mobile launch pedestal in the Vehicle Assembly Building, VAB, and later moved to the launch pad on rails. This method reduces the pad occupancy and enables the vehicle to move back to VAB for protection in the event of any cyclone warning or other threat. 83 meters tall, 40 meters long, and 32 meters wide VAB is equipped with six sets of foldable, come vertically repositionable access platforms, a clean room, and two cranes for handling loads. A kilometer long rail track connects the VAB and launch pad. Launch pad has a 70 meter tall umbilical tower. Three vertical repositionable and swiveling access arms provide access to the vehicle. Mobile launch pedestal, MLP, over which the vehicle is integrated is a 16 wheel bogey with four jacks that would lift the launch pedestal and tow it to the tower on the rail tracks. During integration of the vehicle, the engineering teams can never afford to relax their guard, even for a moment. As the launch date approaches, one senses a palpable heightening of alertness and keenness in the air. As the rocket stages stack upwards, the excitement builds up almost in direct proportion. The vehicle's first stage, also known as a core stage, is 21.25 meter long and uses approximately 138 tons of composite solid propellant. Four strap-on earth storable liquid boosters are attached to the core stage 
to augment it and generate the required lift-off thrust. Each booster is 19.74 meters long and carries 42.7 tons of liquid propellant. The second stage is around 11.6 meter long. It uses earth storable liquid propellants and weighs approximately 39.5 tons. The third stage is around 8.5 meter long. It uses cryogenic propellant weighing approximately 12.8 tons. When the stages begin their journey towards the assembly building, the moment means a lot to the development team. The flag off is always marked by a spontaneous cheer and a round of back slapping. These stages then get assembled in the vehicle assembly building with other stages. The moment has arrived for the fully integrated GSLV F08 vehicle on the mobile launch pedestal to move away from the vehicle assembly building towards the umbilical tower. Following the final remote checkout and fueling operations through the umbilical tower, the vehicle lifts off. Recently, GSLV has launched satellites like GSAT-14, GSAT-6, INSAT-3DR and the South Asia satellite. These are being used for supporting various applications in the field of communication and meteorology. In this mission, the GSLV will launch GSAT-6A communication satellite. This satellite will complement the services being provided by GSAT-6, which is already in the orbit. It will be a technology demonstrator for high-power S-band transmission from the satellite for supporting two-way communication. GSLV F08 mission carrying the two-ton class GSAT 6A communication satellite will open a new chapter for the Indian Space Research Organization. With an eye firmly on the all-important Chandrayaan-2, the space agency is trying out a few critical components, which include induction of high-thrust Vika's engine and electromechanical actuation system in place of electrohydraulic actuation in the rocket's second stage. The next-generation Vika's engine developed by the Liquid Propulsion Systems Center, LPSC, is being flown for the first time. LPSC Director V. Narayanan told Express that the improved engine would give a significant advantage in terms of enhancing payload capability. Usually, the chamber pressure is 58 bar, but with the use of high-thrust Vika's engine, we will achieve 62 bar which is a 6% increase in thrust that gives us 70 kilograms of additional payload gain in this mission. Right now, we are going to use the high thrust Vika's engine only in the second stage. Basically, we are validating it. For Chandrayaan-2 mission, we will be using five such engines aiming for a payload gain of around 250 kilograms, Narayanan said. Another important experiment that the National Space Agency is attempting is last depletion mode shutdown. Generally, scientists store extra propellant in the tank and cut off the upper cryogenic stage after reaching desired velocity. However, this time they are attempting to deplete the liquid oxygen, which means using up another 60 to 70 kilograms of propellant in order to achieve 4-5 seconds of additional burn duration. Narayanan said this would be the best way of mission planning and optimum utilization of propellants. All these new things are being done keeping lunar mission in the mind and ISRO's bigger game plan to increase GSLV payload capability. For Chandrayaan-2, we are formulating a perfect combination. The four strap-ons and second stage will be boosted with high-thrust Vika's engines. Cryogenic upper stage will be loaded with enhanced propellants of 15 tons instead of current 12.8 tons and will be operated with 9.5 ton thrust compared to the present 7.5.